I love highways. And I love to put things on top of highways. That's why we're going to build illegal things today. You'll see me extending the freeway from last episode and building a huge bridge across the sea. To make everything more interesting, I tunneled the highway underneath the high school and also built the track and field extension next to the interchange. To round up the whole area, we will also build some apartment blocks and some more mid-density housing squeezed in between the merging freeway roads. Okay, let's go. To start things off, we will build a large bridge across the water here. This road connects to the highway system again at the unfinished tunnel from the coal power plant episode. Like that people can bypass the first town on the map and drive directly into this city here. Do you have any name suggestions for the cities? I'm really uncreative in that regard. For the bridge, I used a normal 8 lane road bridge to build up height for a ship path. Right in the middle, I deleted four segments to make room for the cable stayed bridge type. I also continued the slope to get a nice arch effect for the bridge. When you build it like that, it always looks much better and more realistic than a completely flat bridge. Here are merging three roads at this interchange to continue together on the bridge. One is the highway that goes underneath the high school, above another bridge, through a building and then to the crazy interchange from the last episode. This one is definitely New York inspired. The other freeway will lead to the waterfront, where we built a little portion two episodes ago. The third road will just lead into the city's arterial road network. For now and throughout the whole episode you'll see hardly any traffic and you can say everything is a bit over engineered. That's kinda true, but I hope this will change when we zone out the downtown grid layout and connect everything up. Now we come to the fun part of the episode. I thought it would look really nice to have a sports stadium right next to the interchange here. For that we needed the high school and then I thought, let's just tunnel the highway underneath the high school and that's what I did. It may be not the most realistic build and somewhat illegal but it looks cool, be honest. Working with tunnels in CS2 is such a pain. At first I wanted to build something completely different, but then I gave up because working with tunnels is just too frustrating and they don't even look that good. But anyway, when you use a bit of terraforming to get the entrances right, you can get some pretty nice results. Here I surrounded the entire high school with a key dirt road. I might change that in an upcoming episode because I'm not quite sure yet how I want to design that area in between the school and the water.
I find it much easier to build a wide road at first to trigger the cut and fill mechanic. Like that, you don't have to be super precise while building these roads near a cliff. When you're done with the road layout, you can simply downgrade it later to a one or two cell wide road. Like that, you're avoiding bumpy roads and a lot of frustration. The routing of the highway is pretty wild, but sometimes it's like that, especially in urban areas with uneven terrain. Here I removed the entire hill to make room for a somewhat flat road layout. This area is still pretty close to downtown, so it will be zoned with high and medium density buildings. I tried to make the grid as good as possible, but the conditions were not optimal with the pre-existing roads and curves. I hate those gaps, but in CS2 it's super hard, for me at least, to build perfect grids. One key tip I can give you here is to disable road guidelines. They usually mess everything up. For a great and smooth road network, it's really important to work, or rather don't work, with the snapping tools. When you have all snapping enabled, you're quite limited with available options, especially with curves. Disable snapping and eyeball, it is the key to success sometimes. Here I had to connect the road with the exit ramps to the highway next to the school to the street layout below somehow, but the terrain was quite steep. So I deleted a segment of the road and replaced it with a ramp. Then I built another road on top of the existing one to have a gentle slope towards the road up to the high school. This looks really cool in my opinion. To 
To make everything a bit more interesting here, I decided to build a bridge to the hill on the other side. As you may know by now, I really like the look of the arch bridge here. On the other side, there will be huge apartment blocks on top of the hill and the highway with some more exit ramps is squeezed in between. The noise pollution here will be insane, but it is what it is. Now the road layout is done, I will fill in some parts with buildings, but not everything in this episode. On top of the highway here, I used 2x2 office buildings right next to each other. These buildings look really cool, and together they look like a long and huge modern apartment block. I wish we had a make historical button, so they won't change their appearance over time, but maybe we will get a mod for that. One important but also quite annoying thing is to delete every spawned building with the wrong color over and over again. It simply looks so much better when every building in the row has the same color to it. What's really cool is that you can place and zone buildings underneath bridges in CS2. That's why I placed down tennis courts down here and zone the street with low density commercial buildings. In my opinion, that's a cool little technique to fill in weird shaped gaps in your road layout. I also use that pattern in my CS1 builds. Build a grid of pathways and fill the squares in between with trees and bushes. 
Like that, you get a nice little plaza for your sims to hang around. Unfortunately, every park and even every asset is rectangular again. That really limits the creativity to use these buildings. Now we just have to detail every little space with bushes and trees. That's always one of the most important parts of the build to blend in everything together. Enjoy the rest of the time lapse and the cinematics of course afterward. If you liked this episode I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. If you're also interested in the save game, for just one dollar you get access to it on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Thank you.